What's up everybody and welcome back to another GEST June matchup so soon? Yes, so soon I am bringing you another matchup right after the other one casted. I casted, so yeah, let's get right into this matchup. This is from the playoff bracket, the group stages are over. And that doesn't mean I won't be bringing you any more group stage matches. In fact, I have another very exciting group stage matches featuring Lydian Dreams that I'm really, really excited to bring you. But right now, this is from the bracket stages, and both these two teams are extremely popular in the Filipino scene. This is a Pinoy Pinoy action. This is kind of stuff that is too this is too hot for mortal eyes to watch. But fortunately, you are here to watch it in all of its glory, and hopefully, you won't be too stunned. This cast will be rated uh, NC17 for some Pinoy and Pinoy action. <laughs> no, just kidding, guys. Anyway, we have Mineski Power Color on the Sentinel side versus the defending, the two-time defending GMPGL champions, Badburn, who was picked up by Pacific Esports. So big shouts to those guys at Pacific Esports for bringing together one of the most powerful Pinoy teams in uh, the world, <laughs> because there are only a couple Pinoy teams in the world. But well, not not just that, but one of the most powerful Southeast Asian Dota teams in the world. And since they have not been invited to the Air National 2. I think they were given a chance to participate in the qualifiers, but neither of these teams were invited to the Air National 2, so I expect them to continue with Dota 1 until land support kicks in for Dota 2. And then I expect them to eventually switch to that game. But since neither of these teams are invited to the Air National 2, uh, they were given their opportunities to qualify, they didn't make it. So they will have Dota 1 to concentrate on, and that means we're going to see extremely high quality Southeast Asian Dota 1 matches. And I'll try to bring you as many Chinese games if I can find some. I mean, let me know if you want to just watch some Chinese Dota 1 pub games. Because I can definitely bring you those from S Gamer, but competitive matches are a little bit more tricky to come by. But enough of me blathering on and on. Uh, this is actually said in the replay it was a Captain's Node uh, game, but this is just a remake. AP, so you can kind of guess some of the bands. I think Templar Assassin, Naga Siren, Batrider, um, yeah, those are probably the biggest. Shadow Demon? Yeah, Shadow Demon was probably a band. Earthshaker was not a band. Queen of Pain was not a band. Morphling was not a band. So some of those standard heroes that you have come to know and love in the Southeast Asian scene have, are not showing up in this game. Instead, we see Rubik, Windrunner, Rubik being played by RR on. Mineski, Oa playing the Windrunner, Jay playing the Puck, ASD, who is Nando playing that Dragonite. It's a little bit curious, not going to lie. Um, I think in the group stages, we didn't see too much of Nando, but he looks like he's in here for the bracket matches, and he's going to be playing that Dragonite, playing typical hard K and CMW. I'm not too sure who this is. Um, let me know in the comments. CMW, I guess he's the replacement of Jewel since he left Talidian Dreams in the last match. And yeah, I'll still bring you some group stage matchups. In fact, I do have another exciting matchup featuring Lydian Dreams, featuring Jewels of Lydian Dreams. And that's a group stage match. But right now I'm going to bring you this match because guess who's on the Scourge? Yeah, look at this little sly dog. We got Jun Ten uh, playing the Queen of Pain, Inma playing the Vengeful Spirit, Bia Bas on the Morphling. Played a nice Bat Rider last time we casted a Badrun game. Uh, Don playing the h -Nap version, and just Pacific BB playing the Techies. And big shout out to Pacific Esports again, if I haven't mentioned this already. But they picked up Bad Burn, the two-time GMPGL defending champions, and they are definitely a team to be reckoned with right now in this Southeast Asian Dota 1 scene. And as always, shout out to Gods and the Ghost of Gamers crew for bring, putting on this monthly Dota 1 tournament, featuring all your favorite Southeast Asian Dota 1 teams. And Mineski vs. Badburn, two of the most popular Dota 1 teams, along with uh, iZone and probably MSI Evo GT. Are, those are probably the top four favorite teams in the Filipino scene. So I expect a really, really sensational matchup. And Techies, I mean, come on guys, he ain't in Dota 2 yet. I'm I'm really excited for this matchup, and also we see Rubik, another hero not in Dota 2, hero who is still extremely popular right now in the competitive meta game. Although there was a thought I was trying to expand on Rubik before I got cut off, I think two or three casts ago. Um, Rubik seems like an overpowered hero with his spell steal, but if you really want to take control of one of those game-breaking ultimates, usually heroes like that have a, a, a less spammable, a more spammable skill. Besides the ultimate, like Tidehunter, you can pop the Ravage and then immediately spam that Anchor Smash while everybody else is disabled if you have quick enough fingers. Tree, you can pop the Overgrowth or the Nature's, pop the Overgrowth and then do, immediately drop our Leech Seed 
before the Rubik can get in position to spell steal. So the, there are different ways to counteract that. Silencer, if you get the global silence, then of course you'll be silenced, so you can't cast a spell steal, and then you can cast Curse of Silence or Glaives of Wisdom or things like that. And meanwhile, Queen of Pain is going to be watching Ola Chief. Yeah, she did save her skill point for Blink. Level 1 Blink, very, very short range. And meanwhile, Kofi and Magic Missile are going to be dropped on the Earthshaker, and they actually still in the DK, but Earthshaker is going to be the first one to fall. CWM, CMW is going to be gonna go down with that first play and Techie's doing a beautiful job with the creep hero block. Dang, that Warcraft 3 pathing too strong. And Techie's really making the most of his 270 base movement speed. I mean DK, he has low base movement speed himself. I think it's 285 or 290 for DK. But still nothing can compare to that. Really, really slow Techies. And he went for the landmines level one. Now there are a lot of different ways you can play Techies in both the games. Um sometimes more public games and in a lot of the play Dota guides, they advocate for the suicide bomb. But, you know, that really is Techies hurting in terms of experience, because you'll be dead a lot of the time. Even though you now get experience from the suicide kills, if I'm not mistaken. But really, if you want to really be a true pusher, which Techies excels at, a ridiculously fast farmer, an exceptional pusher, and mines that go through that base tower damage, then you really need to level up those landmines, which he has done at level 1. And Techies versus DK, when was the last time you saw this matchup? I can't honestly recall. You know, Ancient Apparition is being harassed quite heavily, is forced to pop a healing salve. Illusion Rune is going to do a lot of damage in terms of ushering away the Ventral Spirit. Already forced to use one Tango, does not have any salves, so she's going to be forced to back off for quite a bit. And just in terms of talking this trial lane, I mean, the Rubik winner trial lane will have a clear advantage over the Morph playing Ancient Apparition Ventral Spirit trial lane. Earthshaker dropping defensive figures, Windrunner having naturally high base attack damage, and very, very good attack animation cancel. And Rubik, of course, having very nice spam ability. Meanwhile, Ventral Spirit doesn't have the best range. Morphling has very low base armor. Has 3.6 with that ring of the protection. Gonna be upgraded into Ring of Aquila. Meanwhile, DK is duking out 1v1 mono e mono versus the Dragon Knight. But luckily backs away in time so he can dodge the landmine by the techies. And meanwhile, on this bot lane, it's gonna be Puck versus Queen of Pain. Usually Queen of Pain does have the advantage. But it looks like Jay's doing a nice job in terms of ushering ushering away the Queen of Pain. And Puck, if you let her let him keep going, he's gonna become quite a deadly threat in the mid-game. Dream Coil combined with that AoE silence. And I think the most important thing about Puck in these Filipino games is just that silence. I mean, these Pinoys, they love to spam their spells like no other no other uh, region in the world for Dota. And if they can't be casting spells, then they're going to be in a lot of trouble. So Jay is doing a nice job lane controlling it up against Jutan of Bad Burn. But I expect it, once Jay picks up enough money for his bottle, which he should have in about 250 gold, so still quite a far, quite a bit away, he will be okay in terms of controlling the runes. Queen of Pain, of course, pretty survival with that blink. I don't expect either hero to kill, to get a kill on the other. Unless Queen of Pain does a lot of passive harassment with that Shadow Strike and attack damage. And Orb Puck just manages to harass down the Queen of Pain with Illusionary Orbs, or Illusory Orbs, along with the Waning Rift Silence. Meanwhile, <laughs> DK Techies, Techies going with that standard Pinoy Bottle Crow strategy. Uh, DK 11-4, I mean, DK should not be in too much danger of dying unless he doesn't step on these two deadly landmines. But DK, of course, has naturally high armor with the Dragon's Blood, already level 1 Dragon Blood. I uh, mean, Techies base attacks are not really too threatening, but you really want to get a decent level of that Dragon Blood because those landmines do do physical or mixed damage. I think they do physical damage because they do go through tower, tower protection, and if you have high base armor, you can withstand a lot of the landmine damage. You know, this top lane really being controlled nicely by the Windrunner and Rubik. Windrunner is taking most of the farm. You know, Morphling is just having a miserable time up on this top lane. And Maneski, they've fallen out a little bit in both Dota 1 and Dota 2. And in fact, they recruited an entirely new Dota 2 team. I think Mr. Swish, a Han player, was the captain of that Dota 2 team. And they did not put up a very nice fight at all in the International 2 qualifiers. So hopefully, uh, Maneski, they can regain some of their lost swarm ever since Jules left. And you know, get back to the level of Dota that all their fans desperately want them to get capable of. But Badburn is no easy opponent. Badburn, really, really, probably the hottest PNR's Dota team in, right now. So, Mineski definitely cannot underestimate these opponents. And I'm sure they played against each other a lot of times. Maybe they even scrim against each other. You know, DK is going to refill his bottle, has picked up the Quelling Blade, allowed him to last it a bit easier. And you know, that Bottle Crow, of course, is not in too much danger of being harassed by that Techies. And all the while, I missed a kill, my first kill, and missed kill in quite a while. 
Looks like RR, the Rubik player, did take the fall. So 3-0 in favor of the Badburn squad. Not going in favor of Nesky. They're keeping down the Morphling in terms of farm. But Morphling has made up in, for it in terms of two hero kills. So that's going to be able to get him an early Ring of Aquila. And then have enough memory gen. And hopefully you can get enough lane control to keep down the waveform. And I think the biggest part is that Windrunner's really left by her herself. He, she doesn't have the backup of the uh, Rubik physical harassment. So now Ventral Spare and HNF she can just throw down some physical harassment, usher away the Windrunner. But she does have pretty good farm nonetheless. So, just in terms of the lane, uh, DK picks up a haste to try to initiate on the techies. Uh, the landmines have already detonated, but DK is not going to dive in aggressively for the techies. Had enough mana for the uh, dragon tail, but I guess he is worried about his uh, base or his burst of damage. And techies probably surely picked up one level into Suicide Squad. So DK did not want to tower dive, did not want to expose himself to the danger of dying to a techies, which is always a silly thing to do. Or it seems silly. Good techies players always put down mines in good areas. You often see good techies players place mines here when the fog of war, or here, here where wards can't see it. Sentry wards can't even scout off the vision unless you just venture out the way. But one thing that Pinoys do do <laughs> with that can counteract techies, even though they don't really know it. Or they probably do know it, but they do have the double bottle crow, and if you don't have Beastmaster, then having that flying vision will just be all the more important. And Morphling, unfortunately for him, waved in, form in front of the trees. Ventral Spirit is going to be caught on the wrong side of the fissure. It's going to take the fall. Nice last hit by the Windrunner. Kofi being dropped on the Rubik, and now Morphling is just going to be stuck in there for a while. It looks like Windrunner wants to help free the Morphling buddy out. Waveform's out, try to get some harassment on the Windrunner, but Morphling's going to have to retreat. Earthshaker does have enough mana for a fissure. Waveform will be on cooldown, drops the fissure. Let's see if Morphling can get chain stunned down. No, I don't think they have enough mana. Morphling is starting to morph his uh, stats into strength. Meanwhile, Ancient Apparition and Ventral Spirit finally respawns. Rubik takes the fall. RR dies once more. And now Ancient Apparition is going to escape by the skin of his teeth. And Ventral Spirit, along with Earthshaker, are going to try to defend. Ventral Spirit gets another stun off on the Windrunner. One more waveform. We'll get the kill. Waveform is not going to have enough mana to cast that. But looks like... Uh, M.A. manages to pick up the last hit, and they're going to try to go on the offensive. Rubik teleports back in. So much action going on this top lane. Here comes the Fade Bolt, going to do a lot of damage, and Morphling does not enough mana, should have enough mana for the Morph. It's going to drop a Fissure, and now you can see the timing of that Morph, but he's being trapped completely by the creeps. These creeps, whose side are you on? You're supposed to be on the Scourge side, guys! And Morphling is going to take the fall. Rubik picks up the last hit. Arhar, after feeding a couple times, managed to pick up a double kill, nonetheless. So nicely done. You know, my phone is spazzing out, but I am going to ignore that for now, and hopefully it'll just not show up in the post-recording. Looks like Techies has been ushered off the lane. Uh, has he died at all? He has died once. Sorry I couldn't catch that, but there's just too much action happening on that top lane. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain is going to initiate on the Puck. Just going to do some base harassment to that Fairy Dragon. And Queen of Pain, ever since picking up that ball, has cemented herself nicely in the lane. 35 and 11, compared to the Puck, 33 and 6. Neither hero is pulling away uh, too much in terms of the hero creep skills, in terms of the creep kills, or the hero levels. So both heroes performing very, very well, and like I always say, you can't leave a, queen, a Pinoy Queen of Pain alone. They just go crazy in the mid to late game. Sonic Wave is going to pick up the kill. Nicely done by Jutan, the Queen of Pain. It's going to drop that Battle Crow to help refill the mana. Let's see, what she, let's see what she decides to go for. Either Link it to her Aghanim Scepter seems to be the favorite build for Queen of Pains in the Southeast Asian scene right now. Meanwhile, Techies, after dying, still is 33 and 7. And the biggest thing about Techies is just to get the experience. And you can see, has picked up the Soul Ring, a must on any Techies player. Always able to constantly refill that mana along with the Bile Crow. And if you pop the bottle, you regain all that lost HP. And meanwhile, Fissure's is going to be dropped. Earthshaker is very, very low HP. Somehow got stuck, may bait away from to save the rest of his experience. Ancient Apparition is going to take the fall for the Scourge. So another hero trade going in favor of neither team. One for one exchange. But all the while, DK is getting pretty much free farm. And she, he has a lot of gold stocked up in the bank. 200 gold. Picked up a Claymore. So he's going to go for that Lothar's Edge. Which sounds much, much cooler than the uh, Shadow Blade. I mean, Lothar is just a badass word, but I guess it's copyrighted by Blizzard. And the waveform dispels the Dream Coil, so a little bit of a wasted ultimate by the Puck. But it does have an 85 second cooldown. And one thing I always harp on is that 
in the mid game, you really want shorter cooldown ultimates rather than those long duration game breaking ultimates. So I can just get into the mid of engagements that Pinoys love to employ. And meanwhile, Techie's gonna bait in Dragon. <laughs> Here comes the match here slow, and the remote mine's gonna easily pick up a kill. Nice baiting by the Techies. Techie's such a deceptive target. Much like an enchanter is saying, oh, Techie's low HP. I can just go in on him. Just can gonna go uh, own his ass. But Techie's just popping remote mines and a little bit of unwary play by the Dragon Knight. And nice reinforcement by the Vengeful Spirit. Able to pick up another kill for Bad Bird. So Bad Burn, 8 and 5. And right now, just checking out the overall farm levels. Queen of Pain has 47 and 13. Farm levels going in favor of, uh, looks like Mineski for the most part. But Dragon Knight has died twice. And meanwhile, uh, Morphling. Only 19 CS, not having good time on that top lane whatsoever. Meanwhile, Windrunner has one more hit away, gets wave farmed in for the last hit. Phew! Barely managed to catch that last kill while I was looking at the creep, sky, creep score. But still, not gonna miss two anymore. Or I'll try not to miss. Can't really jinx myself, guys. But yeah, let's just talk about the overall strategy that both team wants to go for in the mid game. And when you have a techies, you're okay to turtle, especially when you have morphing on your side. Meanwhile, there's gonna be engaging for the ventral spirit. Ventral spirit match pick up an invisibility rune, and looks like the bot is gonna have to be crowed back and sent back to the fountain for the sentinel side. And now Dragonite has to be careful. Has pretty good 11 base armor already. Level two Dragon's Blood. Here comes Magic Assault, but Queen of Pain comes in with the reinforcing gank. They're just doing a nice job in terms of always keeping Nando down. And Nando, the star carry player, the young prodigy of the Maneski squad. When he doesn't have a good time, Maneski doesn't really have a good time at all. You know, Morphling has not been able to get too much farm, but has managed to pick up three hero kills nonetheless, and only died once, so he's going to be able to pick up that, he has picked up that Perseverance, probably going to go for the Strength Treads if he is, if his farm is not going to, if his farm continues to not go very well, and if it goes very well, he'll be able to pick up a straight ultimate, then go for that stay in Lincoln Sphere, and Lincoln Sphere on Morphling is such a good tool, it's like a Battle Fury, except, you know, shittier in terms of farm. It just gives you a lot of mana regen, so you can just power down creep blades through the form of your waveform. You know, just talking about Techies build, I think... I think the standard Techies build for the Pinoy scene, I can't really be too sure. Like, the amount of uh, Southeast Asian <laughs> public matches I've seen are next to zero. But I think the standard Techies build is either go for Yules to give you some faster mana speed, or just straight Aghanims, and looks like, oh my god, Dragon Knight walks in, no sentry wards, and two remote mines combined with that magic, so completely decimate that Dragon Knight, and that's the one thing that won't help you, that Dragon Blood will not help you, because those remote mines are complete magical damage, and they do a crap ton in the mid game. Here comes the Shadow Strike, gonna do a lot of damage to that Puck, Puck should have enough mana, and has a phase, which should be able to motor away, nice job saving the silence, but looks like the Screen Paint is gonna get dodged nicely, but nice job by the Queen of Pain. Always saving enough mana to cast that Sonic Wave with another blink. Gonna send down out that bottle to get that mana regen back up. Meanwhile, it looks like the Techie's gonna be initiated on Fade Bolt is gonna be casted, and fortunately the remote mines did not get exploded. Is there a sentry ward? Yes, a nice sentry ward being placed by R. Scouting out this these mines very, very nicely done. But Earthshaker takes the fall nonetheless. Unfortunately, this sentry ward does not scout out this soul because it is just a sentry ward. Meanwhile, the stasis trap is going to slow down the creep waves, advance for just a bit. But overall, this game is just going slowly for Bad Burn. Their Queen of Pain is getting farmed. Their Morphling is not dying. Uh, they're getting a lot of kills on Nando, the DK player, who's going to have a very, very late Shadow Blade. Or Lothar's Edge, my bad. And you can see a stasis trap. Nando just charging in, not giving any sorts of crap. But is forced to back off. Cold Feet going to be proccing. And that's going to be uh, that engagement for now. Techie's going to keep teleporting back in, and he has picked up the Staff of Wizardry. I can't believe I forgot about one of the most important Techie's items. Luminous would berate me so heavily. The key Techie item is Four Staff. And that is just the worst Chinese accent of all time. Please forgive me. There are some things you can just never be forgiven for. And it might just be too late to apologize. I'm sorry, guys. But yeah, Force Staff is such a devastating techies item. Has picked up Clarity, he's always keeping his mana regen up, and is going to keep that bottle going all the way out. A second where you're not mining is just a second wasted for techies. Either you must be getting experience, or you must be mining. Otherwise, techies is just a complete waste of a pick. You can just do so much. But there are good things about techies. An insane turtler, a 
pretty good AoE crowd control disabler if you manage to pop one stasis trap in a battle, which is easier said than done. I mean, it takes 1.7 seconds before that stasis trap finally is able to proc, but if you manage to get one stasis trap, you manage to get like an initiation with the tie down to ravage or a black hole, and just manage to get one stasis trap, you're gonna win the team fight. I mean, if you lose the team fight, then I have nothing else to say to you. But yeah, Techie's very, very high risk medium reward hero, and if you get a stasis trap up, then it's very, very high reward hero. Probably a higher risk than can be said, and meanwhile, that replicate is just gonna be completely on shackle shot and faded bolt use being used. And I don't think Winner managed to pick up a bottle, so she's gonna have quite low mana reach and Earthshaker can get initiated. And here comes the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, manages to hit the Earthshaker with a couple more hits. Puck comes in for the reinforce, and here comes the remote mine. It's just gonna be placed, and it's gonna do a lot of damage to that. Looks like Queen of Pain comes in with the Blink Sonic Wave, cleaning up the kills, and I, my god. Every time I see a Punoi Queen of Pain, they just go on a rampage. I'm surprised that this hero isn't banned more in the Southeast Asian scene. Um, we just see Queen of Pain every game. And she, she's just such a nuisance. I guess you don't really ban her because you want to pick her for yourself. Meanwhile, Puck is going to get cold feeded. Earthshaker, Rubik is very, very close to being out of position. Here comes Queen of Pain for the reinforcements. Blinks in, is going to be able to cast the screen of pain. No winner escapes by the skin of her teeth. And here comes the dream quote. It's going to be able to latch on. No, it just times out. Very unfortunate for the Puck player. But the Rubik fade bolt comes in the reinforcements. Rear manages to pick up the dominating streak, sacrifices his life, and meanwhile Don picks up the kill in return. But trading Rubik for a Queen of Pain and defending your tier 1 tower. No, it looks like the tier 1 tower is going to die. Let's see if Bioboss can pick up the last hit. Yes, nicely done by Bioboss. And he's finally picking up his farm. 55 CS finally. And with that tower kill, he should be on his way to his Lincoln Sphere. And with that, he'll be extremely hard to kill. Meanwhile, Nando still not close to his Lothar's edge. Does he have the broadsword in the courier? No, he does not. So he's still about 1,300 gold away from that Lothar's edge. And the problem with the late Lothar's edge, early Lothar's edge, I mean, it gives you move speed, it gives you a nice form initiation. But late the Lothar's edge, it doesn't give you much DPS. You know, the enemy team will notice that you're getting it. And one of the big things about Lothar's edge, as he does a nice job in terms of sniping that courier, uh, is that it doesn't really give you too much bang for butt. Buck. All it does is just give you a little bit of mobility, and looks like Techies is going to usher away to Techies forces a TP, but Ventral Spare is not too concerned. Oh, that Courier is going to be in a lot of trouble, but Nando is going to desperately try to micro it away. Always keep it in range so DK can bottle it up and refill it, but now the Courier is one more hit away from dying. Waveform being stolen by the Rubik. Waveform, one of the better skills to steal if you are a Rubik player. You'll have the mana to cast that, and you, it's a nice escape mechanism along with a burst damage nuke. Meanwhile, Puck checking out the Puck's farm very quickly. 200 gold away from that blink dagger. Meanwhile, DK is getting initiated on Ice Blast combined with Sonic Wave and the mag Magic Missile. Easily kill Nando, so Nando is just not having a good time whatsoever. And Nando's courier died as well. This is not going well for Mineski. Oh, Bad Bear might just have thrown Mineski for a loop with this unorthodox Techies pick, but Techies isn't really the big problem. It's Queen of Pain and Ancient Apparition with just the concert threat of the Morphling in the rear. And they're just doing a nice job. Ventral Spirit has just been counter ganking. This Ventral Spirit has definitely been the MVP. Big shouts to Inma, the Ventral Spirit, just counter ganking like a boss and always keeping that DK down. And now they're going to pick off our very easily Ice Blast. Oh, wait for I'm going to touch that last tick of the Ice Blast, but no, looks like Don managed to pick up the last hit nonetheless. And standard h snap version build after for the Southeast Asian scene is to go for the mechanism and let Ventral Spare ward up. Has picked up the Arcane Boots, doing a nice job in terms of counter warding. So Badburn, they just seem to have all the momentum going in this match. And let's see, what can Mineski do to get back in this game? Well, Puck Blink Dagger will certainly help, but it looks like he went for the Force Staff. Force Staff a bit more defensive, it'll help your teammates out a bit more. It won't really help you out because uh, Blink Dagger has 4 seconds shorter cooldown and just synergizes so well. And of course you can Blink in any direction and you have a longer range with that Blink Dagger. So Blink Dagger on Puck is just a better item in general for uh, Puck. But in terms of the other team, Force Staff will definitely help you out. And if your teammate gets stunned by a Stasis Trap, if your teammate gets stunned by the Queen of Pain Shadow Strike if it's being slowed, then you can Force Staff away your carry like the Dragon Knight and save his life potentially. But right now Dragon Knight is just being harassed too heavily. It looks like Techie's got telekinesis in 
or four stacked and then telekinesis. Such a deadly combo. I think that's what happened. Looks like he bought back. And like I said, every second where you're not spending m your time mining or getting experience is a wasted second for techie. So I'm not really as big of a hater as a techie spyback as in the early game if it's not really necessary. I don't know what I was trying to say there. But fortunately for Queen of Pain, she has picked the Lincoln Spear, and now she's going to be ridiculously difficult to kill. Lothar's Dragon Tail won't even be a solid enough initiation. They're going to have to drop a Fissure, they're going to have to drop a Telekinesis, and to at least dispel that Lincoln Spear charge. And keep in mind that the Ultimate Arm gives the Queen of Pain nice stats. Meanwhile, Puck versus Morphling. Morphling still pretty low farm, but is on his way to the Lincoln Spear. He's just going to do Saras into the Puck four steps away. Yep. Morphling will be able to pick up the ladies here right about now, but he might just be saving up for the Eagle Horn so he can go for that shotgun build. And last game I talked about how I don't really like the shotgun build, but in this case, when your team is far ahead and your opposing team has a lot of squishies, shotgun is definitely a smart choice. But no, he's going to go for the here. Extremely, extremely smart choice as well, and it'll help him farm that shotgun a lot faster. Of course, giving that mana regen and giving some survivability never really hurts you in any stage of the game. Meanwhile, Puck just being constantly harassed. Here comes the Ventral Spirit in from the rear. Managed to get a stun off, and no phase shift, no blink dagger. Nothing can save the Puck. And now we see Mineski. They're just getting picked apart. Very, very unusual play. You don't really expect that. And here comes the Lothar's Dragon Tail coming in. Nice shackle shot. Managed to shackle the Morphling, but the Chain Stones did not synergize well enough. And now Morphling is going to be able to escape. Very, very unfortunate for Neski. I thought those chain stuns were chained nicely, but just that split second, that spamming of the Outcast key. And now here comes a swap. Oh, I managed to pick off Inma, the Ventral Spirit, but trading the life of the Ventral Spirit for Morphling is a trade Inma will take any day of the week. And meanwhile, Techies all the while just pushing down the creep waves, keeping those landmines up, constantly peppering the mid lane with traps always keeping sentry ward so he can counteract other sentry ward and that mid lane is just going to be it's minefield what else can you say except it is just a minefield it is so dangerous to traverse and techies just if, if your team is winning and you have a techies like it's the most annoying thing in the world like seriously i mean i'm starting to sound like a valley school guard girl by saying like so much but it's just the most annoying thing in the world because at that point in the game as puck nicely dodges the Sonic Wave with the phase shift, and looks like Techies managed to pick off CMW, the Earthshaker. Dream Call, this Puck is just living on the edge. It looks like Queen of Pain is going to change targets to the Rubik. Lincoln's here disabled one of the buffs, Silence, and the nice chain stun's going to be able to kill the Queen of Pain. But looks like Jay the Puck took the fall nonetheless because of that ancient after Giant's boss. But let's see if any more procs are going to tick in. No, the RR and the Windrunner are going to be able to escape nonetheless. But yeah, just to get to my point about techies, this is one thing Waga taught me, and this is why, you know, we saw back when Infuse was known as Eve McCore in Dota 1, and Druids and all that jazz, you know, Magnetar went for the Lothar's Edge. Because when you're ahead, the other team really wants to get items, so they can tank up, they can get bracers, their supports can tank up, and survive battles where they can throw out one or two spells. Because one or two spells when you're behind really makes a huge difference. But when you're behind, and you're facing invisibility here. When you're facing teams that need a lot of detection, your, your supports aren't going to be able to buy enough uh, sentry wards. They're not going to be able to buy enough dust to really get enough items to tank up. You don't want to take farm away from your carries because your carries are the only way to get get yourself back into the game. But you're not going to be able to. Uh, but you really need to get enough money to continue buying sentry wards to keep buying gems and dust. So just dealing with a hero like Techies like an Invis Magnetar, heroes like that when you're behind is just, it's the worst thing in the world if you are a support player. I mean, Gem won't even help you too much because you have extreme mobile heroes in the form of Kree Pain, in the form of Morphling, in the form of the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast just coming in from across the map. And if you get a gem, they're just going to be picked off in the blink of an eye. So I really feel for Mineski's supports right now, RR and CMW. It's a wonder that CMW has managed to pick up Arcane Boots since he is 0-6 with seven assists. R, yeah, R is really suffering most of the blow. Has picked up a Silk to see, but pretty much no CS to his name. And meanwhile, Nando's gonna be picked off once again, and they're gonna try to kill the career of Ventral Spirit with the slot for the last hit. <laughs> Cheeky play by Inma, just playing magnificently. But yeah, this is, this is why I don't really see why, 
I know a lot of my fans are Pinot, and Queen of Pain is one of the favorite heroes, but considering how deadly Queen of Pain is in these uh, Southeast Asian versus Southeast Asian Dota matches, why do you not we s why do we not see Queen of Pain banned more often? Instead, we see heroes like Invoker, Lycanthrope, Batrider, heroes like that who don't really get who don't really have the burst damage to sustain like a Queen of Pain. So just riddle me that. Meanwhile, it looks like BB the Techies bitch pick up double kill across the map. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, you'll have to forgive me for that. I'm gonna be proud of myself. 35 kills in 25 minutes, and I don't think I missed too many kills whatsoever. So, looks like Babern, they are just outplaying Mineski to the fullest. And, I mean, I don't know if Techies was like, oh, such a genius smart pick. But when you go for a very aggressive, very mobile lineup that can get yourselves an early lead, Techies is not a terrible hero to pick up. And it looks like Techies went for the Bloodstone, had a Void Stone, so it was in indicating that he might go for the Yellow Scepter to maybe give himself some Cyclone and give himself that extra 20 move speed or 25 move speed. But instead went for the Bloodstone, allowed him to spam even more. And Techies is pretty much has no fear, he can just stand in by himself in this mid lane and just plant all these mines to his heart's content. And Mineski constantly have to buy sentry wards, but meanwhile Badburn just doing a nice job and just buying sentry wards themselves. I mean, they're rich, they have the money. Vengeance Spirit are involved in so many ganks, they've killed the Mineski courier twice. So that's even more money to buy sentry ward and help counteract the sent. As looks like Earthshaker died in this mid lane. I mean, you could guess what happened. He walked in to the mines and he blew up. What else can you say? I spy is gonna be able to miss RR just barely. So a little bit of a lucky escape by RR. But here comes Dragon Knight gets home oh, no, gets stunned by the Stasis Trap, but the four staff in the Windrunner is gonna be able to pick up a kill and looks like Ancient Apparition is gonna be a lot of trouble. Four staffed away. They're gonna be able to pick up the Ancient Apparition as well as the beginning of a Mineski comeback. Dream call being popped once more. And here comes the Sun Awake. Unfortunately managed to pick up the puck. As Queen of Pain comes in from the rear, Stasis Trap just stunning everybody for such a long amount of time. Stasis Trap, if you get that off in a team fight, you're going to win it. And here comes the Shadow Strike. Can Queen of Pain escape? Yes, she does escape. And now she might go on the offensive to kill the winner. No. And keep in mind, all the well, Marvel is saying, Creeps, I love you so. And why I love you? Well, you always know. Just farming up a ridiculous amount of gold. 3100 gold make gonna definitely go for that Eagle Horn so he can go for that shotgun ethereal blade. And right now, considering Earthshaker level 10, Rubik no tanky items level 10, Puck only has a four staff. If he bait out this uh if he bait out the phase ship then he's pretty much butter. So Ethereal Blade is definitely a smart choice in this situation. And DK, of course. Pretty much your only physical DPS, and you can't even really do too much. I'm gonna go for the BKV. A smart choice, but I'm not really too sure what it will do for your team. I mean, it doesn't give you much damage. One of the things I find with DK is that you really need a lot of damage if your team isn't pumping out too much. As just Dark Green is just picking up kills all over the map. And this is this is a little bit hard to cast. I mean, techies, you can't really keep your eyes out all over the map and just pick up kills in the blink of an eye, as looks like Ice Blast is going to try to initiate on the Earthshaker, as Earthshaker falls, Ice Blast hit with the Queen of Pain, Stasis Trap going to be missed, but here comes the swap, as just outside of swap, out of uh, Stasis Trap range, but Dio and the h version picks up the kill, so Mineski is just getting picked apart, constant save is being called out, actually in this turn there's a bit of lag, uh, not going to lie, I think I saw in the last match I cast in, uh, somebody had like 1.3k ping so in the ghost of gamers net replay parser but yeah this is an online tournament it's not like the gmpgl which is a land tournament we want to swap in for the techies it looks like rubik picked up the swap and techies just kills himself very emo couldn't stand to see couldn't just the world was just beating him down too hard and keep in mind, Morphling just farming completely uninterrupted. This, this creepy Glover has been in this area for the past at least five minutes. And probably longer if, if I've been keeping closer watch on that Morphling. But you don't want to see a Morphling farm. You want to see Techies picking up kills all over the map. But it looks like Techies just... And at this point in the game, having these mines are just free, free wards. 
And like I said earlier, the Mineski supports do not have enough money to buy Sentry Wars, buy Dust, buy Gems. We haven't seen a gem all game, and I think it's because Mineski supports, they just don't have enough money to get a Dust by itself. And even if Mineski picks up a Dust, what can they do with it? If they get a gem, you have Swap by the Venture Spirit, always in the right place at the right time. You have Queen of Pain just being such a nuisance. You have h Night Fish and Splash perfectly placed, just going to kill that gem care immediately. So... Mineski, I'm not really too sure what they can do to get back in this game. Dragonite is out firing the Morphling, but Dragonite has died several... Has died, let's see, how many times has he died? Six times, dang. Meanwhile, you know, Morphling just checking out his gold right now. 5k gold in the bank, gonna be able to pick up that Eagle Horn and the Ethereal Blade very, very soon. And they want to get a Smoke Gank up on the Morphling. The Morphling senses something is amiss. He's just gonna teleport out, so a Smoke Gank, gonna be wasted. But I guess they noticed, hey, no landmines there. That's something. So no, not a complete waste of a smoke, but it's not the best use either. No, Morphing went for the Mantis style. God, every time I say, oh, Ethereal Blade would be such a good item in this situation. The, <laughs> these Morphling players just juke the heck out of me. Just trolling me. As Puck has picked up a Blink Dagger out of nowhere. Puck is pretty much the only hero on Mineski's side who's doing anything in this game. And he's even then he's died seven times, but he's been able to pick up some farm. He's constantly keeping the lanes pushed, and that's how it's just such an important thing. But uh, Courier dies for the third time. That's 175 times three. That's 525 gold for the entire Scourge team. That's that's a lot of gold. And now you can see the Roshan just being warriored up. And this is another advantage of having the techies. You have so many ways to block. Uh, entrances into the Roshan, especially if you're on the Scourge side of the map, then the Sentinel can't really approach you from any angle. So they're just going to have to push down the towers. But it looks like Roshan is going to be taken down very easily. Morphine is going to come in with some physical DPS, going to be able to right click down that Roshan with the help of the Morph. And with that, uh, with the Aegis on the Morphling, I don't really see too much of a way that Bad Bird can lose this. Excuse me. Hopefully, that no, did not. Uh, get recorded by the audio I just sneezed. But anyway, look at this Venture Spirit. Filthy Rich, always buying Sentry Wards, always buying Dust Appearance, always keeping in mind the Dragonite has Lothars, gotta keep him on the back foot, have the Dust, have the Swap, and just kill him over and over. Dragonite has picked up a Hyper Stone, but looks like he got stunned. Oh no, he's getting it stunned again by the Stasis Trap. Here comes a couple mines, Dragonite taking so much damage. Dust Appearance is gonna be a- oh, it just barely caught the Dragonite. Really unfortunate for Nando. Oh, I feel for you, buddy. That is not a way for you to die. The minefield of Techies just destroying the Sentinel side. And there are heroes. I mean, very few heroes like a Techies, who once you pick up a lead, it's very... It's just so difficult to play against. And, uh, I mean, that's one of the things that Waga told me. Big shouts to Waga, who helped teach you a lot about uh, competitive Dota mindsets and things like that. Like, oh, why, why are you getting Lothars on Magna? That seems like a dumb build. He's like, no, you're bad people. And, but yeah, it definitely opens your eyes to a different way of thinking. So, looks like Morphine is going to go in for the high ground. He has the HC Mortal. Queen of Pain taking a lot of damage. Basling Spear and the Agnum Scepter. He's going to get swapped out. Here comes the Rubik and the Windrunner. Morphine is just going to replicate out. Going to farm the bot lane. Why? You don't even need to really push in. Just wait for the Sentinel side to make a mistake. And wait for Morphine to get even more farm than he already is. Morphine already has 2100 gold in the bank. So he's well on his way to whatever item he goes for next. I'm not going to call it any item. I mean, at this point, I mean, I predicted the Ethereal Blade a couple of times already. So I'm going to say Ethereal Blade again, just so I can remain consistent. But I won't be surprised if he picks up any other item in the game. I think I'll just cover all my bases, say he's going to pick up Butterfly, Scotty, uh, Crystalis, Bariza, Monkey King Bar, etc, etc. And then, of course, I only fix up his Helm of the, Helm of the Dominator, I'll just be like face palm. Meanwhile, Techies gets hexed, but he gets swapped out of an eventual spirit. This Inma is just playing fantastically. Bioboss picks up a kill on RR, the Rick player. Techies is going to die, but they're going to trade a DK for the Techies. And the Techies responds very quickly because of that Bloodstone, nonetheless. And even when you focus the Techies, he gives up that 400 AoE heal. Or, I think it's 425 times the number of charges. So, Techies is not even too fussed about this. And Puck is just going to be the only survivor. He's the sole survivor. 
but he can't do much against his continued onslaught. Queen of Pain just chasing him down to the ends of the earth as a blood vendetta against his puck. Smells blood in the water and is just a shark. So 14 to 34. Maneski getting stomped by a techies. When did you see the day? And to be fair, Maneski, they have not looked very strong ever since they lost uh, Jules. I mean, Bad Burden and MSI Evo GT, those are really the top Pinoy teams at the moment. Along with uh, Izone and Maneski, probably third or fourth. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain is just going to blink out. They're going to be able to easily pick off this tower. And now here comes the fun with Techies. You're going to have to ward your own base against the mines. And Techies, of course, is just now approaching that bottom lane. Easily going to pick off the Rubik. No, Screen Pain going to be able to pick it off. Or Sonic Wave. Dream Call catching the Morphling, but he has Morph. He's just going to morph it all into strength for a bit. Easily take the stun just because he can. Just because he's an Aqueous Morph water blue lizard thing. I don't know what he is. He's whatever he wants it to be. He's a morphling. He don't give a damn. He's like an manager. Meanwhile, DK doing pitiful amounts of damage. <laughs> Two attacks did barely 200 damage to that techies. Here comes a force staff initiation by a DK. Managed to pick off the ancient apparition. That's something. As it looks like techies might be forced to go on the tree. BKB gonna be casted. Did DK pick up a gem? No, there was a sentry ward. No, Puck has a gem. So gonna be able to scout out the techies mines, but that gem might have been a little bit too little too late. As Queen of Pain taking a lot of edge, a couple more attacks, one more attack. Yes, Puck picks up the last hit. Jay picking up that kill, and now Ventus Bear in my gonna have to retreat out of the way. He might be able to escape, but here comes the Puck. Can you get a hero block? Yes, a shackle shot, minute stunning for 0.75 seconds, and here comes the cold breath by the Dragon Knight. Able to retreat, pick off the retreating Bad Burn heroes, but they didn't kill the Morphling. And Techies, I think, bought back and just decided to mine up the top lane. So, yeah. yeah looks like Morphling went for the Thier lane. Oh, I totally called it, guys. So he's going to be able to easily pick off heroes like the Puck, like the Winner, only 1200 HP, Earthshaker, 1100 HP, Rubik, 1100 HP as well. And this Techies just constantly pressuring every lane. And what can you do? You can't even push out against them unless you have a gem or a sentry ward, which Puck does. Can Mineski actually claim the tier 1 middle tower? They are going to die, take it or die trying. And they do take it. Oh, it picks up the last hit. Mineski, it's going to be difficult, but there are a couple ways they can get back in the game. One, they have to stick together. Which is not what Nando is doing. Nando is going to feed. Very unfortunate for Nando. But one, they have to stick together. They can't be caught in position. A very mobile team with a span of old global ultimate like the ancient apparition ice blast can just pick off a hero in the blink of an eye as you see Urshaker blink the heck out. Two, they have to get lucky. They have to get all the AoE ultimates catch at least three or four heroes. Echo Slam, Dream Coil, and they have to get the silence off, which might be the most important thing. Three, they have to get smart items. No saving for buyback, which, you know... <laughs> Pinoy teams rarely do anyway, but I don't think buybacks would help you in this case. If you if you die, you're pretty you can't really buy back and hope to accomplish too much anyway. But items like Hex, because there's no BKBs on their side, there's only a couple Lincoln Sphere. Hex will be a very, very smart item. Uh, more four staffs might not be the worst idea. Damage up for the DK. And if DK's BKB charges goes down to 5, I think he should immediately resell and buy another BKB for 1900 gold. Because he really needs that full duration of the BKB in order to be really relevant. But unfortunately, I don't see too many players doing that. Of course, this is my own opinion. Uh, keep in mind that I'm nowhere near as good as any of these players are. And they are many times smarter than me in terms of in-game decisions. You can see for yourself if you watch me on stream, twitch.tv slash b three. Shame with self-promotion for the win. You know, Morphing is just going to solo push it up. He's going to Manta Split away. Can he get an Ethereal Blade kill? He has 1800 HP, 200 agility, so he won't be able to one-shot anybody. Here comes the Hex on the Dragonite, and Ether Blast combined with the Force Staff, just able to save the Dragonite in the nick of the time. A Blink Stone by the Rubik. Not the best skill you could steal. A good steal, but not the best, best spell you can steal for a defensive situation. So, meanwhile, Dragon Knight, they're just going to wait out the Elder Dragon Farm, and keep in mind that when it does die, it's going to be on cooldown for 50 seconds, 60 second duration, 110 second cooldown. So that's one of the main weaknesses of Dragon Knight in the late game. You can take advantage of that 50 second gap of the Dragon Knight Ultimate Farm cooldown. 
Meanwhile, Vengeful Spirit completely caught out of position. Not really too sure how she got over there. In my maybe trolling it up a bit. Or just distracting the heck out of Mineski as Morphling is just going to siege up the mid tower. But Morphling is going to get chance done. He does have the Aegis, so he's not really even too concerned. He's going to try to get. He just gets an Aether Blast combined with the Adaptive Strike. But Dragonite's going to do a lot of damage. Dragonite finally turns back into the Dragon form. This might be time for Badman to initiate, but they did lose a lot of the passive damage or from the command vent of Eventual Spirit. Morphling taking a lot of damage. I wouldn't be too afraid to die at this point. At least you're wasting a lot of Mineski's time. Uh, but yeah, morph back to Jilly and just suicide. But no, you never really want to waste an Aegis in any situation in the game. Now Mineski, they have to back up. Dragon Form will be on cooldown for another 25 seconds. Meanwhile, Techie's just doing as Techie does in late game. Pushing all the lanes, giving your opponents no room to breathe. And Dragonite, can he go on the offensive? Gets a one hit off on the Crow, but stays Trap cleverly planted as <laughs> Dragonite going to be able to escape, or is stunned. Can Puck kill the techies? The moment of truth. Here comes the chase. Phases has flares on autocast, I think. But techies, of course, just running through his landmines. Only, as only a techies can do. And here comes the reinforcements from his teammates. <laughs> Puck just four staffing next to no distance. And are they going to be able to kill the Puck? He gets hexed and he's going to die in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, Earthshaker gets shotgunned. And yeah, I don't really see any way for Mineski to come back from this point on. So I'm just waiting for the GG at this point. Badburn just looking so strong. Definitely they are the Filipino Dota 1 team to fear along with MSI Evo GT. So keep that in mind. And of course they are sponsored by Pacific Esports. Just recently picked them up, if I am not mistaken. And here comes the swap on the Morphling. Can they pick off Bayabas? Massive damage being thrown out by the Dragonite, but here comes the Hex. Dragonite is forced to pop as a BKB defensively, and that's going to leave the Minrax to fall for free. And all I'm waiting for is the GG. Necrobooks being purchased by the Techies as well, or by the Queen of Pain, or whoever decided to pick it up. Dragonite going to take the fall. Dies to a Techies auto attack. It's a sad day in the life of any hero if you die to a Techies auto attacks. So GG is called by Mineski. Badburn just had complete control of the game, gave Mineski no room to breathe, and just complete and utter domination. So yeah, let me know if you like all these GST replays. I plan on casting at least three more, and if you guys don't want to see them, then let me know in the comments below. Follow me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all that jazz, DC. And thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll be sure to bring you more Dota 1 replays in the very near future. I'm going to try to do five games in five days. Or even a less amount of time. So thank you for watching, everybody. And have a fantastic day. Oh, one more thing. Pull down the final score screen. Just checking out the overall CS. Morphling had a rough start, but <laughs> ends the game with ridiculous farm, ridiculous gold. And Badburn just gave Mineski no room to breathe. If, you, if you're playing techies, you have to win the early game. Otherwise, it's going to be so difficult for your team to hold on with the underleveled techies who can counter by gem. But if you win the early game, techies is just such a rewarding hero. Very few heroes can keep down enemy supports like a techies. So just keep that in mind, everybody. So hopefully this won't be the last we see of techies. And hopefully this uh, prompts Valve to implement techies. You know, rumors are saying that Techies is going to be the last hero implemented in Dota 2. And if you look on Cyborg Matt's blog, then you can see that no work has been done on Techies whatsoever. But teams like the Southeast Asians, like uh, Infused, they love the Techies. So hopefully you'll still see them in games. And hopefully this prompts Val to pick him up as Techies managed to pick up Rapier. Just for the trolls. <laughs> Rapier's Techies. What a world, what a world. So thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.